Loyola University, New Orleans. Welcome to the Student Affairs Zoom panel session for parents about homesickness. My team and I are happy to be with you today, and we hope that you and your loved ones are staying healthy and safe. Before we get started this evening with the panel, I'd like to outline a few Zoom rules. Out of respect for the panelists and the desire to share as much information as possible, all participants, excluding panelists, will be muted. Participants will be able to ask questions via the Q&A function. The chat function has been disabled in order for us to focus on Q&A. Panelists will answer as many questions as possible in the time allot allotted. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Our student and parent panelists are Zantre City and Julie Gottlieb. Zantre City is a senior majoring in digital filmmaking and he hails from Nashville, Tennessee. He currently serves as the vice president of Loyola Student Government Association. Julie Gottlieb is the mother of a Loyola sophomore who is also majoring in digital filmmaking. She is an employee at Fairfield University in Connecticut, a fellow Jesuit institution. So this evening we'll spend approximately uh, 15 to 30 minutes on questions for our panelists. Then we'll move into about 15 minutes of on-campus resources and virtual resources for our students and parents. And then we'll conclude with any uh, questions that you all might have for us. So let's get started with our panel questions. Um, Julie, this first question is for you. Uh, what was your students' experience like with being homesick? Hi, I think thanks for having me. Um, I'm gonna start with a caveat, although I do work at a university, this is my opinions and, and my own. And um, I think every kid is different, so I'm not an expert by any means and this is, sort of our experience and, and, and what worked for, for us. So um, homesickness, which I kind of think of as not only, you know, missing home and parents, but also the anxiety and sometimes depression and overwhelming uh, aspects of being at school. Um, my son uh, didn't really miss home or us. Uh, he was very happy to be 1200 miles away in a new city and being independent and living his, his uh, new best life. Uh, he's an only child, so uh, that might explain some of that. And he had a great first semester. A um, couple of, you know, bumpy stops and starts in the beginning, but he found new friends. And, um, and nearly all of them were exchange students. So they all went home second semester and he was back to square one. Um, so my first piece of advice, if you're giving any to your kids, is um, diversify. Um, the second semester was hard, and he kind of had to start all over. He was uh, lonely and um, had a difficult time making connections this time around. And so I recommended the usual things. I think the things that we all think of, you know, join a club, volunteer, pounce on people in the hallways. Um, but my son is is not really a joiner um, and he chose consciously not to do those things because he preferred a more organic approach and while that may or may not have worked for him um, I had to remember this was his choice and that's what college is all about is figuring out how you're going to live your life and make those decisions and so we um, we we let that we let it go <laughs> and let him do what he wanted to do. Thank you, Julie. Zantre, same question for you, um, but from a student perspective, what was your experience with being homesick? Right. So, um, hi everyone. My experience was quite different. I um, instantly felt some form of like homesickness um, once I got on campus, just because. I went to a really close-knit community in my high school where I had tons of friends. I was class president then. I just really felt that sense of community. So coming from that into being back, you know, the, the low person on the totem pole, it really was a, a wake-up call for me. 
um, and I instantly felt some form of homesickness. And a lot of my friends also, they, t uh, they went to the same college. So I would be looking on my Instagram or my Snapchat and they would be hanging out together. They would be doing things together. So I was like, whoa, like, should I just go back to where they're going? Like, they're all friends. Like, they have everyone. So um, it was a really, a really interesting experience for me of, of making friends organically, like Ms. Julie said, but also um, just wanting to have friends and wanting to have that sense of community that I thought I was missing from looking at Instagram and Snapchat um, and just, you know, normal social media things. Thank you, Zantre. Julie, I'm going to toss another question back to you. Um, can you let our audience know uh, what were the top three ways that you supported your student through homesickness? Uh, sure. So um, another caveat, I, I fact checked with my son um, to make sure that what I thought was useful was actually useful. So these are these are approved uh, approved by him. I think the first thing for us was was to listen, um, and and to be there, but not to be there. You know, don't get jump in a car. Don't um, jump in with solutions. Um, we wanted to give him, you know, allow him to purge and be sad and emotional and frustrated. Um, and then avoid getting sucked in and, and, and having those emotions ourselves, even though sometimes those conversations can, um, it can be really upsetting and, and sad. Um, we tried to avoid lecturing or solving the problem for him or throwing out a million suggestions. Again, we wanted him to be able to develop, um, you know, um, some skills you know, not just how to do your laundry, but but also sort of some emotional skills as well. And um, so th that is hard. Um, I think after, you know, one of these, you know, bad phone calls that, that we all, I think we all get at some point, um, we worked to sort of keep in touch, but keep it light, um, you know, not hounding him. So like the, the morning after you got one of these calls, um, the next day I might send um, a text, but I didn't say, oh, you know, do you feel better? Did you meet anybody? You, you know, are you ready to transfer? Um, it was more, um, as, as Alicia said, he's a film student and we're all kind of into film. So I might send him some casting news um, in a text and, and just to kind of we're here and, and have that sort of normalcy and connection without, you know, kind of jumping down his throat or maybe regurgitating all that bad stuff again because you want them to move forward and i think you know they're still kids and um they're they're still emotional roller coasters which are is exacerbated by being at school and sometimes and this was kind of hard to remember sometimes they've already moved on so you're lying in bed at night awake staring at the ceiling thinking oh my god i i'm gonna have to go back i'm gonna have to go get him and we're gonna have to transfer and all the rest of that and and he would have moved on he would have purged and be feeling better and and out you know out in it and and trying to get better and 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 we'd still be you know um drowning in the current there so um that's i think um an important thing um the second way i think um my son actually mentioned this to me um, uh, we tossed it, I, I tossed it off as an offhand comment one of the times we were talking and then he said it kind of stuck with him in those initial months, which is um, to remind them that nobody knows what, has, they have no idea what they're doing. They're, they're all lost, most of them are lost and freaked out and clueless and overwhelmed, even the ones who put on a really good front. Um, and I think, um, you know, it's, don't pay attention to social media. Um, as Zantre was saying, it's really easy to go look at what your friends are posting at their respective universities or situations. And nobody's going to post that they're miserable or they're crying in their room or they're they having a hard time making friends or they're, um, you know, they're checking their queue in Netflix. Um, and, and I think that applies to parents too. Don't get caught up in hearing from, from other parents, you know, that their kids off and having a perfect experience. Um, the third thing uh, I, I think for us um, was information is, is your friend. Um, my son wanted me to share that for him, 
being anxious and overwhelmed was the biggest issue. And this sounds like, like an odd thing, but actually helping him get organized and compiling resources and how to's ahead of time. Um, and then we still, we still do it. Uh, he has a binder that's got some, a lot of printouts of things that are on the site, like how to go on Health Connect, how to register for classes, you know, what's the list of pharmacies that are close by, things that just kind of help give a sense of, oh, I got that. I know where that is. That's one thing I don't have to worry about because I know where I can, I can get that. And um, it, it, for him, it, it lowers anxiety um, and that in turn is, puts him in a better place to deal with the bigger feelings and challenges of home sickness and, and being overwhelmed when, when they happened. And I think the information works not only for your student, but as a parent, um, if you can educate yourself um, about the school so that you can make informed suggestions and have answers when they when it is appropriate and they do want those things, you know, so read the Friday Five, the emails that come to us. Um, if you're not already, get on the, uh, the Loyola Facebook page. And the university itself and, and the various departments all have social media accounts which are um, chock full of, of um, activities, but you know, also deadlines and things that they might be nervous about missing, those sorts of things. Um, I think it's important not to push. Uh, my son and I, we have a particular agreement. Um, which is that if I see something that I think might be an opportunity to do and engage, I will, you know, like a trivia night or something, I'll take a screenshot of it and I'll text it to him, but I'm not allowed to say anything in the text. And um, I never mention it and he never mentions it. It just goes off into the, to the void and then he can, uh, what, he, what he does with it is his, his own business. Um, and I, if I can also add, I think, um, and I know you're going to talk about some of those things, um, knowing what resources are available. Um, as I said, I'm not in student life, but I have to deal a lot with research in terms of what's going on in higher ed right now. And I think it's no secret that, um, you know, depending on where you look, roughly two thirds of, of college kids right now are experiencing some sort of depression or anxiety. Um, and um, sorry, the cat just came in. <laughs> Shush. And um, and so I think it's important to to make sure that you know and and that your child knows um, what the mental health um, resources are. Success coaches. Um, my son really liked his success coach, and and um, and that was very helpful. Um, you know, these are we know our kids, you know, we like to think we know our kids best and we, we probably do, but these are also trained professionals and problem solvers who know the school, who know kids. Um, and I think that they're just another great weapon in the arsenal of, of helping your kid with the transition. So um, I think also just the last thing and then I'll stop. Um, there's some rules we had when they were little, were really little that still, that still kind of work, which was, you know, let them, let them vent when they're little and they went off to school and they had a great day and then they came home and they were just miserable human beings because you're their safe space. You're the place where they can let it all hang out and no matter what, you've got them, you love them and they know that. And, and um, so I think that that same model <laughs> applies even when they're 18 and 19. Um, distraction, remember that one? We used to just, you know, give them, give them a treat or look over there. I'm going to talk about this now. Um, so I'll, I'll mail a little something. I'll, you know, put 10 bucks in his Venmo account. It's a little harder now that there's social distancing, but there's ways to just let them know, you know, you're there kind of in the background if, if they need you. And then redirecting, again, when you're having those conversations, um, at some point they start to sort of exhaust themselves and sort of, you know, sense when you can move the conversation to another lighter topic and maybe start to work your way off the, off the bad stuff so that they can, they can get to a happier place. Sorry, that was really long again. Julie, thank you. And I will summarize what you've said to be able to um, share just the beautiful um, ideas that you have and the experiences that you've had with your son. Um, so first I heard active listening, 
um, helping to regulate emotions. You encourage self-care, um, checked in with him. I also encourage support as parents. You normalize the experience for him so that um, instead of focusing on social media and what that outward facing was like, but just to say, yeah, uh, most, most students are going through what you're going through. You also focused on an area um, that the two of you could control together, uh, connecting to campus resources, um, setting up skills that would lead to good adulting, um, knowing how to access pharmacies, knowing how to set up appointments, those sorts of things, and um, having that toolbox that he can choose from that would be best supportive um, of him in the moment. And then it sounds like you also, your relationship evolved as a processing partner, so that as a child, you processed with him in a certain way, but now you've managed to process with him in a different way as an adult um, that is modeling um, good emotional regulation, tolerance of difficult emotions, knowing that they'll pass, um, and those that support that you're providing both emotionally and also the tangible items, you know, in the Venmo account and the, um, the, the sweet things that you might be sending to him, all of that adds up to balance the happiness in those not so great days that might be happening. So thank you, thank you for that, appreciate it. Um, Zantre, now we're I'd like to hear from you about how your parents helped to support you through homesick homesickness for sure um it was really hard with me uh for me to think through how they helped me with this because i'm a senior now um and the feelings i felt as a first year are so different from what i'm feeling right now like right now loyola is my home like of course it's a it's a, it's a different looking home right now but it is my home my friends are here everything so um, i really had to de uh, dig deep in my memory bank to think through like how do my parents support me with this? And I finally got to thank them actually yesterday. I was like, y'all really helped me through this. And I didn't even um, notice and give y'all nearly as much credit as I should have. Um, so yeah, I, I boiled down into three things, the three things you asked for. Uh, number one was being there. My parents, um, I'll, I'll bring them down first. Number one was being there. Number two was creating a sense of structure. And number three was reminding me who I am. Uh, so with being there, like Ms. Julie said, uh, my parents were always there. We have a family group chat, which works really good for us. Um, they were always there just like sending us messages, making me feel like I was still in the loop of my family, even if I was at Loyola, and still wondering about what Loyola was doing for me, uh, but finding that nice balance. So I, I, I never felt like they were super like, hey, Zantre, did you make a lot of friends today? Hey, Zantre, how's this going? They weren't micromanaging, but they were always there to know just, you know, if I wanted to talk. Number two, with um, creating that sense of structure, um, I'm a very big person on like planning and organizing, which is a skill that I have developed through college. But my parents worked really hard to know that um, the more free time I have is the more time I have to dwell on what I don't have. So if I don't have friends right now, if I'm just sitting in my bed, I'm going to be thinking about not having friends. So uh, my parents did a really good job of saying like, hey, Zantre, have you thought about going to this show? I'm into theater. So have you thought about doing that? Um, have you watched this show? This show comes on every Tuesday, even if it's something as simple as that, um, reading this book, going to this organization's event, just, you know, thinking through a structure and making sure that I don't have frivolous time to just dwell on what I don't have. And then the final thing, which I think is one of the most important things, is reminding me who I was. Um, it's very easy when you're a first year, and like I said, coming from a very close-knit school, where I felt like I was the man on, in my high school, that kind of thing, to go on this campus and now no one really cares about me, I think, in my head. Um, it was really interesting for my parents to remind me and say like, hey, Zantre, like, you are amazing, you're great, like, love that shirt. Like, little things like that really helped me out to say like, whoa, like, I'm not, I'm not a lame, like I may think I am in my head. I'm actually cool, like, my friends will come. Um, and with, with saying that, like, making friendships it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, so I really um, appreciate my parents like reminding me of these things because ultimately I made my better friendships from that, from, from not just hanging out with anyone I see, it was from building those real relationships and those real friendships. And those are who I'm, I'm really good friends with now because I had time to make those friendships. Um, and then my final closing thing, 
uh, it's super interesting how Ms. Julie said, like everyone, um, everyone is going through those kind of thoughts of like feeling that sense of loneliness too. And that would have helped me so much if I would have thought that through as a first year. Um, because a lot of my friends now as a senior, they say, Zantre, I thought you had it together. I thought you were living your best life. Every time I saw you, you seemed you, like you were doing great. But little did they know that I was also dealing with the same sense of, of homesickness and, and loneliness that they were. So I think it's super good to normalize that and say, like, that's just a part of adulthood and that's a part of life is, is figuring out what friendships and relationships you want in your life and, and where people fit into them. Yeah, that's what I got. Thank you, Zandre. That was great. Um, so to summarize, your um, top three uh, keys and in, in, in how you were able to process through this appropriately. Um, it sounds like your parents, their presence, but then also uh, reminding you of, of the value system of what makes you happy and then recreating those meaningful experiences, um, making Loyola your home away from home by doing that, that um, you could really feel grounded and centered um, and also in encouraging, um, encouraging you to um, make the best of, of what you had and to uh, be patient as, as you progress through your life at Loyola. Um, I, also, I also appreciated um, that emotional connection that was fostered even though y'all were apart. The group chats, um, as we know, especially um, during the pandemic, that emotional connection is, is so important. And so finding those, those simple ways to ensure that that continues, um, it sounds like your parents did a great job at that. So thank you for that information. Zantre, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with you for our, our last question. Um, what's the most important tip that you have for our current families, speaking of the pandemic, um, during this time? Right. So um, I know it's easier said than done. I know it's super cliche, um, but I really do encourage getting involved with whatever you possibly can. So encouraging your students to find ways to get involved in the Loyola community. There are countless amount of ways. And I'm sure that everyone here is going to talk about that in a few, uh, but really allowing those relationships to naturally blossom and encouraging them. So whether it's in the residence hall, whether it's in an organization, no matter what it is, like allowing those relationships to at least fill the void until they make their lifelong Loyola friends that they're going to make. Um, just really encouraging them to, to stay active, stay involved, um, and not dwell too much on that. Because even like how my senior friends are right now, it's very easy for us to dwell on like, whoa, like 2020 and what's the world going to look like after? No, like let's, let's hit a pause. Let's think about what we do have and let's think about what we are appreciative of because ultimately we have this experience right now. So let's not waste it. That's, that's my tip. Thanks, Zantre. Julie, what about you? Um, so I don't lie, this, this, this is a hard one. Um, and I think uh, this semester has, has been hard. Um, I know for my son, all of his friends except one chose to be remote this semester. Uh, he's got a best friend who's in Hawaii for the semester and, you know, feels the need to FaceTime every minute and tell him what a great time she's having. So, um, you know, he's, so he thinks he's made the wrong decision there. Um, so I think, I think like a lot of college kids across the country right now, he's, he's a little miserable and he's missing the experience of, of last year. Um, and, um, I think what they're going through is so hard. It's it's so hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I think it's hard for all of us to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so I think all of the things that we sort of employed, you know, when the last last year, um, we're kind of bringing that toolkit back to the back to the surface again. Um, and it, it's it's kind of interesting because when I sat down to think about you know this this conversation um so we did one yesterday and um 
Monday night, my son called and, you know, was having sort of a mini meltdown for lack of a better, he'd hate that I called it that, but, um, you know, just the, oh, I hate it. I should transfer. I shouldn't transfer. I shouldn't go to school. I should, you know, I don't like my major. I don't like my friends. I don't like, you know, da, 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 da. And, and uh, this will never end and, and all, all of that good stuff. And, and so we, you know, we, we did tried all those things that I said, you know, we just listened. We actually had some kind of adult conversation. So I think that's actually an opportunity to um, talk about how, you know, we're, we're all going through that and, you know, that there are, cho there are choices and things that we're probably going to have to make because things are so fluid and, you know, we're all pivoting. Um, um, and that this is a good test. If you can get through this, you know, they can, they can probably get through almost anything. Um, and so we were talking about all those things. And then, and then I did the first of these sessions yesterday and I'm thinking, God, what a fraud. <laughs> so I just, I just did all this last night, you know, I, and you know, I thought, Oh my, here's my kid and he's doing fine. And then, and then everything dropped out last night and um, sorry, the night before. And then last night after this session, he called about some other things and um, he said, oh, by the way, he says, I'm feeling so much better. Thanks for listening. He goes, I just kind of went off the rails there, um, but all good. And then he went on to the, to the next conversation and, and I was so relieved that, that, that like it actually worked. <laughs> you, know, you say it actually worked, you know, you hope it does, but it was nice to know that it, that it, that it did. So I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to keep listening. I'm going to be honest with him. Um, these are awful, stressful times. We don't have answers. And as parents, I think that drives us crazy, but I think that's okay. And that's, that's, a, that's not a bad learning experience for them to have as well. Um, so they just need to know that we're there and we're listening and we're supporting. Um, try to find whatever good stuff, the little pleasures that you can, you know, the, the normalcies and, and remind them that eventually, eventually it's got to happen that they're going to get back to, or they're going to have, assuming you're a first year, you know, the, lo the wonderful Loyola experience that, that they used to have, or they expected to have. So I think just keep reminding them of that. Um, thank you so much to Dante. Um, it's just invaluable input. We appreciate you sharing practical information. Now I'd like to turn the panel over to my colleagues. And then we'll share information about available resources. Start with you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Amy Boyle. I'm the Director of Residential Life here at Loyola. Um, I got the opportunity to meet some of you probably during move-in um, and um, have had the opportunity to meet many of your students now, even in this sort of hybrid virtual world that we live in. So um, my office obviously provides housing for your student, but we do a number of other things around services to help make them comfortable, to um, meet their needs beyond um, what might be in the classroom um, and uh, from both a social and um, uh, a, a well-being standpoint. And so the way that we do that is through a number of layers. The first layer is our peer support network, which is for us in the form of resident assistants. They're undergraduate upperclassmen students who um, we spend a lot of time training um, around crisis management, um, crisis intervention, but truly social and um, social support and well-being for your student. Um, that comes in the form of floor programs, both in-person and virtual. Um, it comes through one-on-one -on -one conversations with your students in which they're very directive on how they ask questions and learn about who your student is as a person. Um, not just information gathering, but really getting to know them so that they can best support them. Um, and they have really creative ways of doing that when you're worried about your student and you let us know. And um, they're able to follow up in a way that feels really organic and not like, hey, so what, so I know something's wrong. Can you tell me about it? Um, it's more of a, of a check-in, almost the way Julie talked about of forming a connection with the student 
um, and really that being the starting point of their relationship to um, with us to get connected to resources. We also have professional staff who live in our residence halls who serve um, in emergency on call um, status as well as um, daily for walk-ins, uh, meetings. They also assess, assist with programming, roommate conflicts, one-to-one um, -one conversations just about what a student might be struggling with, um, whether it's academics or social or um, other concerns and helping to be a conduit to other resources when maybe they don't know where to turn. So we operate 24-7, 365. Um, even when we don't have students on campus, we're here to support. Um, and we're just really happy and blessed to have your students on campus with us this semester. Hi, everybody. My name is Asia Wong. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and I am the director of the University Counseling Center and Student Health. Um, if you've ever seen me in orientation, I tell everybody that my team's job is to help your students stay happy, healthy, and well. If you ever have any concerns about their physical or mental health, feel free to give us a call. We're available for consultations. We also have a counselor on call 24-7 that can speak directly to students. Um, check out our website. Lots of resources there, including a quarantine survival guide and a guide to self-care during these times. Thanks. Hello, everyone. My name is Dale O'Neill. I serve as the Director of Student Life and Ministry at Loyola. Um, our office is pretty much a one-stop shop for student engagement outside the classroom. Um, so we oversee everything from club sports, recreation, um, community service programs, worship retreats, um, about 130 student orgs, returning in sorority life. Uh, we run the gambit. Um, so if your student is feeling um, homesickness, uh, like Santre said, uh, I would always suggest that they look to ways to get involved. Um, sometimes students are apprehensive to reach out to professional staff members. Um, so if you ever want to connect with me or a member of my staff, we are happy to connect and give you some suggestions on how to help your student um, find community at Loyola. Um, we have a wonderful software on campus called How Connect, which is our student engagement software, where you and your student can log in and see all of our different student organizations and events happening both on ground or virtually this semester. Um, and then just, uh, it's already been kind of talked about a little bit, but our office also sends out a weekly five things to know, um, which is basically the ma five major things for students to know going on on campus. And we share that in the family Facebook group um, uh, every week. Um, so I would definitely suggest um, if your student talks to you about homesickness, um, recommend that they try to get involved with something. Um, if they don't feel comfortable reaching out directly, I'm happy to chat with you over the phone. And then also keeping an eye out for those weekly five things to know um, and that using that software, how connect on a regular basis. Um, the big piece of advice I tell students is let's say they go to a student org event and they don't like it there's no commitment they can leave so try a whole bunch of things stop by various organization events if it doesn't feel right or it feels awkward they can just leave there's no commitment one of the very very few good things about covid is that a lot of things have gone virtual so they can join a club events virtually if they don't like it they can you know, exit within five minutes. So um, if you can uh, kind of motivate them to, to try to find different communities, and like Zantre said, it is um, not a sprint, right? It's gonna take some time. I think that's some wonderful advice to give them. Um, and then two other things, our office does provide spiritual direction to students. We do have university ministers on staff that um, would love to connect with your student um, if they are homesick. Also, we have resident ministers in the residence halls that are also available um, to talk through some things with students. Thank you. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Diana Ward. I'm the Chief Student Conduct Officer and the Title IX Coordinator here at Loyola. Uh, and the other hat I wear is Chair of our Behavioral Intervention, or BIT team. And BIT is actually my very favorite thing about Loyola. Um, it's a platform that allows any person, uh, whether that be a staff member, a faculty member, a parent, or a student, um, to submit a report on another student um, that they're concerned about. And so we get all kinds of reports. Um, professors sometimes flag when a student hasn't been in class or is struggling in class. Um, from parents, we often get reports that a student is struggling with homesickness or um, they haven't quite found their group yet. Um, so I want to encourage you all to submit a BIT report. I put the BIT reporting form in the chat, um, but if you ever need to find it, just go to Loino's homepage, loino.edu, in the top right hand corner, type in BIT, B-I-T, the first website that pops up, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you're going to see the BIT reporting form. And um, please know that you can note in the form if you don't want us to tell your student that you submitted a BIT report form, we can find a subtle way to reach out. Um, but we do encourage you to have the conversation with your student and to see if they're okay with submitting the, the report. Um, but do know that you, you can ask us to reach out in a more subtle way. Um, so just to give an example, um, let's say we get a report that a student is experiencing homesickness. So some of the things that we might do, uh, we might have their crew leader reach out to them, invite them to coffee, invite them to lunch, um, invite them to actually go to a student event with them. It's always nice when you have that buddy uh, to kind of go to the event with you. We might have the RA check in on them. Um, if the, we know something that they're specifically interested in, we'll have the uh, leader of that organization reach out. So our RAs do wonderful one-on-one -on -one meetings with our students and they try and gauge their interest. And so a lot of times the RAs can tell us that, hey, this student is really interested in intramural club sports. And then I'll let Dr. O'Neill in Student Life and Ministry know and um, she'll have uh, either a student who's in club sports reach out or she'll have Daniel Harris who oversees our club sports reach out and invite them to something. Um, so please don't ever hesitate to use that BIT reporting form. And we really want to normalize to students that it's okay to reach out for help, whether they're doing it themselves or their parents are. Um, last year, we received 900 reports alone. So this is something that is widely used across campus, and no student should feel embarrassed about reaching out for help or um, having their parent reach out for help. But do know we're always here to partner with y'all. Um, so if you ever need to call, don't hesitate. The other thing that my office can do, um, while yes, we do formal conduct cases, we also do informal mediation. So if your student's ever experiencing conflict with a roommate, conflict with a friend group, and they'd like some help on navigating that, they can always give my office a call and we can talk through what we can do. Sometimes the student doesn't actually want us to intervene. They just need a safe space to talk about it. Other times they want a little bit of help from us, um, but we can facilitate that. Ultimately, we want to help students find um, their home at Loyola and to feel safe and comfortable here. So don't ever hesitate to reach out and encourage your students to reach out. But we're really, really happy that you've entrusted us with your child and we take that responsibility really seriously. So we're gonna give them a lot of love and try and provide that familial structure that they'd have at home. Great, thanks team. Appreciate all of you immensely. Um, for our attendees, if you wanna check the Zoom chat, we've got a few resources for you. Um, as well as um, a bit reporting form, how to send care packages. Um, and so uh, that is there for you to take a look at. Um, I haven't seen any questions come through, but I'll certainly, you know, take a moment if anybody wants to write something um, to us, we're happy to field any of those questions. Um, and then uh, as, as, you take some time to maybe populate that. I'll also share a parent survey um, for you to let us know what your thoughts were about our panel. If you have any ideas for future panels that you maybe want to hear from us about, we're, we're all ears and, and we're open to that information. Um, also want to let you know that we've got another panel coming up in November, um, and that's going to be uh, scheduled for November 11th at noon and 5 p.m., both central time, entitled Supporting Wolfpack as our students return home for the holidays. And so it may have been quite some time since your students been home. And so we'll give you some tips about how to ease into that transition um, and make that as proactive and successful as possible. Um, and so I'm gonna check the Q 
Q&A box one more time to see if anything came through. It doesn't look like it. So on that note, again, thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our student affairs team. We appreciate you so much. Thanks to the attendees um, who joined us this evening. And uh, please know that if you ever need anything from any of us, uh, we're a phone call, email, text message away. So thanks for being here with us and everybody have a great evening. Bye-bye.